Hi guys, today I'm going to be sewing this pattern, which is, and it's so simple, McCall's. I picked this up at Walmart for $2.97 and it has a oven mitten pattern and it has the regular apron that we are going to sew today. So there are four pattern pieces that you're gonna need. This is the main apron piece. There's a facing, which is what you see right here, a pocket, and then the tie. So for this pattern, this actually is a casing right here, and this goes over the neck, and it comes out here and ties behind the back. So the fabric that I'm gonna use to make this apron is this cherry fabric right here that I already have laid out, and I also have this fabric over here which has daisies with navy blue backing and this is also navy blue so I can just use navy blue thread for both and just batch sew them and so for the main pattern pieces one size for adults and one size for child the child size is within the adult size but we're not gonna be cutting that so I'm gonna cut this here on the fold and I'm gonna put both fabrics together lay them on top of each other and just cut them out and then I'll show you what it looks like once they are cut out so once you get your pattern pieces cut out it should look something like this so this is the main pattern piece this is the facing this is the tie that was cut on the fold and this is the pocket and I'm actually gonna cut another one of these uh, ties out and extend it so that it could be longer. And in here, the pocket piece, the very top of it, you'll see where it says facing. And so we're gonna cut out a small piece of fusible interfacing that is gonna be the width of this here. That, and then we're gonna fuse it to the back of the pocket pieces on that section. So this is what it should look like once you fuse the interfacing and now we're gonna to go to the machine and surge the right. raw top edge. And this is what the top edge should look like once it's been surged. And this is the back side where the interfacing is. So now that we have ironed the interfacing onto the back side, we now need to fold it and iron it right sides together. In this picture, I have it ironed wrong sides together. That is not correct. Once you have that ironed right sides together, you're gonna stitch the corners down with the quarter inch seam allowance. After that, you will flip it and be able to stitch it down on top of the apron. And here is what the pocket looks like sewn down, although it is very difficult to see. So for this next step, we're gonna take the back facing and we're gonna serge the bottom edge. So once you have searched your, the bottom of your back facing piece, this is what it should look like. If you don't have a serger, you can always use your overlock stitch on your standard sewing machine to achieve this look. So to make the ties, you're gonna lay the tie out as you see it here cutting board and you're going to fold the ties lengthwise right sides together so essentially it's going to look like this and you're going to pin it and I apologize for the view but it's so long that I can't fit it all into the camera but as you can see here the cherries is what it would look like and then like I said you'll just fold it up word like this and pin it for the length of the tie and it will look like this and then you're going to stitch it all the way from beginning to end close and you're going to leave an opening so that you can turn it inside out and then at that point we will iron it down so moving right along, we're taking our back facing piece right here and we're going to attach it to the apron by pinning the top edge. 
And while you're sewing your top edge, you have to remember to leave your two openings on the edges to make room for your casing. And that is what you're seeing me do here as I put extra pins in as a reminder. This is what the facing and the apron should look like once they are stitched together. And as you can see, there's an opening in the thread and that is where we stopped stitching and restarted so that we can allow for our strap to be threaded through. This is what the back side looks like and now we're going to take it to the ironing board to press the seams open so that we can top stitch the openings. And this is what the opening should look like once it's been top stitched. Once you have top stitched the openings at the top of the apron, it is now time to pin the sides so that those can be stitched together. Now that we've sewed those sides, we are gonna trim our edges and clip our corners. After you trim the seam allowance and clip your corners, you're going to turn the facing to the wrong side of the fabric and we're going to give it a good press so that you only see the good sides of the fabric on both sides. After you have turned your fabric over so that the wrong sides of the fabric are facing and you have given it a good press, this is what your apron should look like. So now we're going to edge stitch in between the two openings on the top. This is what your edge stitch should look like. Now it's time to serge or overlock your bottom of the apron. So the bottom edge is where you want to overlock. And once you have finished searching your bottom edge, this is what it should look like. And now we're going to fold it up and press with right sides facing about an inch. So fold it up, press it down about an inch, and then we're going to stitch the corners again like we did the pockets about a quarter inch in, only the length of the one inch. Once you have pressed it up, this is what it should look like. And this is what your stitching should look like once you stitch the corner. So now you wanna clip your corners, flip your fabric so that it's wrong sides facing. So now what you wanna do is poke your corners out and then flip it over and give it a good press and this is what it should look like. Now all you need to do is hem up your side seams first, then lay down your facing to form your casing. You can't really uh, see it because of, I don't have a contrasting thread, but the casing runs from the bottom of the facing, so right here, all the way up and it diagonals like right here. This is where you, where you kind of sew from there to here. And then there's two holes, as you can see where the strap is hanging out. So there's a hole here, or opening, I should say, an opening here and an opening here for the ties to go through. Once you have pulled your straps through, you are all finished. <laughs>